And our next question is, what does the geology of Mars look like? Um, what are its main surface features? Is it, uh, you know, a, a geologically active or dead planet? Uh, and what does that tell us about the potential for habitability of Mars? Um, but I'll just point out the main interesting elements here. So the first one is this, uh, you know, in this topographic map, blue is the lowest uh, area, while well, purple is the lowest, lowest area, and then green, yellow, orange, and then red is the highest with this kind of brown region and white regions being the very highest elevations. And so just right away, we noticed that the entire northern um, part of the globe, almost the entire northern hemisphere, is fairly low lying in elevation. So this is called a volcanic plain. It's about three to four billion years old. And um, I guess type in the chat, is this, must this area be older or younger than this surrounding highland region? Yeah, it has less craters. So it's been resurfaced after this planet has been cratered. Um, so here are, you know, if you look at the orange and yellow region here in the highlands, you see many, many craters. And there's a few spotty craters throughout this lowlands, but not very many. So the volcanic plains are um, young relative to the rest of the surface of Mars, but they're still fairly old in terms of its overall geologic history, right? This isn't very long after um, the formation of the planet itself about four and a half billion years ago. So that indicates that this lowland period happened relatively recently. Well, no, long ago, but more recently than the crater highlands. Okay, so here we're looking at these cratered highlands and um, right, they're cratered. So they're older than those volcanic plains. And you'll notice that this, um, you know, giant depression basin down toward the south of the planet uh, looks like it's, it looks like an impact crater. And that's what it is. Uh, this is called the Hellas Basin and it's the lowest point on Mars. So even though it's on, you know, the same land mass as these crater highlands, uh, the impact has uh, blasted away material or liquefied it and moved it. And it's uh, possible that that impact actually contributed to the rise of those cratered highlands around it. So it could have pushed material down uh, then pushing the highlands up. <clears throat> okay, so all of this highland area, this kind of one giant continent is called the Tharsis Bulge. Um, So-called because it's, uh, you know, so much larger, so much more raised than the area around it. Uh, you can see this kind of gash here uh, across the Tharsis Bulge. That's called Valles Marineris. And uh, it's like, you know, it's much larger than Earth's Grand Canyon system. Like Earth's Grand Canyon would fit in some of the little offshoots of this huge canyon system. It's about the same width as the continental US. Okay, and then the other most prominent features on the surface are uh, these volcanoes. So there was these four volcanoes here on the Tharsis Bulge. The largest of those is Olympus Mons, uh, which is the biggest volcano in our entire solar system. All right, so those are our main features. And my question for you now is, um, how did Valles Marineris form? What, so yeah, we don't see any obvious plate boundaries in the topography. And we also see you know, no obvious patterning to the location of volcanoes. So like Venus, Mars does not have plate tectonics. Earth is special in that regard in our solar system. Um, okay, so these other three options are all reasonable. Um, and it turns out that the answer is B, that this was, uh, you know, land that was ripped apart as the Tharsis bulge formed. So uh, not a wrinkle as the cooling planet shrunk, though that's reasonable to assume. We've seen features like this both on Venus and on Mercury. Um, and it also was not carved by liquid water, unlike the Grand Canyon on Earth, which was carved by liquid water. Okay, we'll look at some other features though that were probably created by liquid water. Okay, but first, so even though um, Mars does not have plate tectonics, it has some seismic activity. And so the InSight program, which I mentioned earlier, is looking for seismic activity on Mars, trying to determine whether there's a liquid or solid core 
and then also drilling down with an arm into the interior of Mars to measure its temperature at different depths. And so this is some, uh, this is like a sound recording at a, translated to a frequency that humans can hear. And so at first you'll hear the wind on Mars and then you'll hear a Mars quake and then you'll hear the robotic arm of the machine moving around. So here's what that sounds like. the robot sound. Uh, but the Mars quake is really cool. So we are used to hearing earthquakes. Uh, well, not hearing them, but seeing them. They have the same type of, you know, characteristic uh, wave pattern. And we've now measured them on Mars. So the Mars quakes are not as strong as earthquakes typically are, uh, because it doesn't have, you know, plate boundaries that are building up huge stresses. But it still does have land that is shifting as um, either as it's cooling and shrinking or possibly due to some mantle movement. So uh, we know relatively little about the interior of Mars and InSight aims to change that. Okay, I wanna come back to Olympus Mons, the biggest volcano in the solar system. And I found this comparison diagram. Sorry, the labels are in French, uh, but you know, it just illustrates really well that Olympus Mons kind of puts the other largest volcanoes on earth to shame. So here's Mount Everest on earth, which is, you know, the tallest peak on our planet from, from base to peak. But the, actually the tallest mountain is uh, the um, Hawaiian Island chain Mauna Kea. So if you measure all the way down into the depths of the ocean and then to the peak of Mauna Kea, that's actually the tallest overall volcanic landform on earth. Um, Everest isn't a volcano. It was formed as the uh, Himalayan plate collided with the rest of the Asian continent and then kind of, you know, pressed those uh, mountains up. So those are not, Everest is not a volcano. So this is kind of a misleading comparison. But anyway, the overall base of Olympus Mons and its height are both way bigger than any of the volcanoes on Earth. And actually, Olympus Mons is taller than any of the volcanoes on Venus also. So instead of the plates moving across the hotspot and volcanoes being formed at different locations on the crust, instead the plate, well, there is no plate, so the surface is stationary and the same hotspot just keeps filling up the same location with lava. Uh, so that's reason number one. It's the same thing that we saw on Venus and on Venus results in those pancake volcanoes. The second reason is because Mars has lower surface gravity and lower surface gravity means that your weight is actually lower on Mars than it is on Earth. So the gra surface gravity on Mars is about 38% the surface gravity on Earth. So whatever you weigh, 38% of that is what you would weigh on Mars. And the result of this for these volcanoes is that that rock just um, can pile up a lot higher before it uh, cannot be supported under its own weight and collapses. So uh, if you've ever well, maybe this is silly, but like, imagine you go to the uh, Oregon coast, right? And you're kind of playing with the sand and you pile up a sand and you just like pour the sand out of your hand into a pile. You'll notice that it generally reaches a, kind of the same angle, no matter how much sand you try to put on the pile, eventually you cannot put more sand on. And this is, a res this is called the angle of repose, the angle that uh, any like pile of granular material makes uh, with the horizontal. And that angle depends both on the material, but also the surface gravity of your planet. And so for Mars, it's going to have a different angle of repose, different shape and different potential size of um, any volcano feature. All right, so those are the two reasons. Lower surface gravity can build up a much taller mountain under its own weight. And then second reason, no plate tectonics. 
Um, okay, and then when you looked at the highest highs and the lowest lows of Venus, Earth, and Mars, uh, you know, the highest, the difference between those points is 30 kilometers for Mars. It is um, eight kilometers for Venus and two kilometers for Earth. So it's in order of their surface gravity, essentially. Um, and also on Mars, the lowest point is that Hellas Basin, the big impact crater, but on both Earth and Venus, it's at the bottom of uh, rift valleys. So that's the Diana chasm on Venus. And then uh, I, what is it called? Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench on Earth. 